Hi, Shannon O'Flaherty here. And today's live training is going to be the introduction to the root chakra and how our beliefs form. And our root chakra is our foundation of personal power and well being, and our connection to the Pachamama, our beautiful Mother Earth. And just like a tree with all of its beautiful roots connecting it, it lets us know that we're connected and safe to grow into our highest potential. And on a literal level, it's about our safety, security, and survival. And it helps us meet our daily demands of what we need to survive. So if it's in balance, we'll stay self-confidence and out of fear. But if it's out of balance, we won't feel secure and we'll have fear governing our life. I remember before going hiking and camping for the first time, I was absolutely terrified and I was projecting total paranoia and panic. I was terrified of bugs. I was scared I was going to fall down an ice crevasse. I was so stressed before leaving that that first week of camping, I couldn't even enjoy myself. I was, I was going to like flick a little green tree ant off of this fence and it turned around and jumped on my finger and bit me really hard. This was in Australia, like where everything that crawls can kill you just about. Sorry for any Aussies watching. And then, and then later, like all, all within like the space of two, the first two days camping, this poisonous frog jumped on my bare foot. I was screaming all over the place. I even cut my finger on my brand new Swiss army knife and I hadn't even used it yet. I was just cleaning it. And looking back, I mean, then I wasn't aware, but I had actually manifested all of this because of all of my projected fear. And I couldn't even enjoy my time in the nature. I even called it the nature because it was so outside of myself and I was not in flow. Can you relate to any of this? If you can relate, type relate below. With a, with a well-balanced root chakra, we'll stay out of worry and attract all that we desire with a quiet sense of strength and confidence about us. Will also be reassuring for others to be around because they'll feel that calmness and easygoingness about us. When my root chakra was pixelated with darkness, I was constantly distracted and worried and even paranoid about what others were thinking of me. And all the time people would tell me I was so defensive and defensively I would, comp I would combatively ask, what are you talking about? <laughs> Are you me then now? Type me below. What I've learned is that the beliefs about the root chakra are all about survival. I know how I used to survive with so many dark pixels weighing me down in the past. And I know the vast difference of how I feel now that I've infused white light into all of my cells. I sure know which one feels better, but Let's look at the bigger picture because it affects all of the chakras for all of the rest of the following trainings. And it's helpful if we understand how our belief systems formed in the first place. So I'm going to talk about neural pathways in our brains like a mountain stream. I'm no scientist. Um, they carry information that become our habitual behavioral response patterns. So this is a kind of stylized picture of neural pathways. And then the background of it is, I think, more like what they probably look like. But if you can imagine a mountain stream running down, and first it's just like a small trickle, right? When, when it first starts to rain, a little stream forms and it goes down the mountain, la la la. And then every time it rains, that stream gets bigger and bigger because there's already a divot in the mountain. That pattern has already been formed. And then it rains again and then it becomes a big wild river flowing down the mountain. So that's kind of how our belief systems form. So 
as children, we're just these beautiful, clear canvases without too much rubbish already weighing down our neural pathways or our streams, right? They're still just trickling. And it's all of the stuff that our parents model to us from the things that they say and don't say, and from the things that they do and don't do. And also how we as individuals with free choice choose to perceive these things. These are the beliefs that we create in our brains. These are the things that make that little trickling mountain stream into a raging torrent of water. These are the beliefs that create all of the inclusions in our beautiful shining diamond light bodies, causing dark pixels that weigh us down and don't let our light out. Just like we do to our own children, for those of you who are parents out there. Yeah, I know, terrifying thought. We do it all with love and best intentions. So when the same situation happens again and again, we remember our past response, so we go down the same stream again. Like attracts like. More dark pixels form. Our habitual behavioral responses are everything. Our thoughts, our actions, how we react to anything that happens around us. Also, the words that we say are our habitual responses. And as you know, words hold vibrations. Are you vibrating yet? At the end of the neural pathway is a receptor that holds all of the stuff in place. So it's extremely hard to break our habits when that receptor is there. So what the belief work does is it breaks the receptor on the end of that neural pathway, and it gives us the best chance to form a new neural pathway, infusing light energy into all of our cells. The tricky part is that we have all these years of practicing our behavior that our natural response is going to head down the same old pathway, which is why we need to practice paying attention to our thoughts and triggers every day. Each chakra holds its own set of beliefs. Our root chakra grounds us to the earth. It's about abundance, which is our natural birthright. If we are not living an abundant life with everything flowing in every slice of our life's pie, our root chakra is most likely affected. Earth is the element of the root chakra and fear is the saboteur. <laughs> so when I was sailing across the Atlantic Ocean on a 48 foot yacht with four ungrounded men and had experienced some of the most intense out of control fear in my entire life. By the end of those months on the boat, I could barely walk. I mean, my right foot hurt so much. I hadn't actually banged it against anything. I hadn't hurt myself. I hadn't kicked anything, even though I sure felt like it. But I was in so much pain. I even had it x-rayed and nothing seemed wrong with my foot. But there I was in a medical walking boot and on crutches on a boat. This was like the last week after living eight months on a boat. And so when I finally got off the boat <laughs> for good and got back onto land, within three days, miraculously, my foot was totally healed and I could walk again. So can you remember a time when you may have created your own root chakra issue? Talk to me, talk to me here in the comments. Mentally, our root chakra is about our, our foundation, our contentedness and connection to the earth. It's also our inability to let go and all the lack and scarcity and abundance issues we may have live here. It's also a yang masculine chakra. And when it's not working properly, there's a lack of vitality. Just like I told you about my foot, a lack of vitality. We may also have security and survival issues such as not being able to find or maintain a job or ending up homeless as an extreme example. 
The root chakra is our foundation. And some beliefs associated with this chakra are, I have to struggle to live or life is hard. In fact, let's just go back here. I have to struggle to live. We probably learned that from our parents because you might've seen them um, being very upset when they were having to pay the bills, or maybe you heard your parents arguing when they were young, or everything was always a struggle, never having enough money to pay all of the bills. So you might have just perceived this and taken that in as I have to struggle to live. And if you have this belief of I have to struggle to live, guess what? You're going to attract that struggle in life. And then life is hard. Same thing if your parents thought life was hard. And you know what? Ancestrally, we could have taken this on too because our ancestors did have a much harder time than the easy world in which we live. And life sometimes now in this day and age is hard with the pandemic and things. But generally speaking, we don't want to have that belief because even if we're going through a hard time, we don't want to be bound to having to be struggling through it. Instead, we want to be able to flow through things. You might have the belief that something bad will happen or that you'll never have enough. And this is all of this fear, living in fear. Like I thought something bad would happen when I went off camping and hiking. And, and so it did. I mean, it wasn't life-threatening stuff, but you will attract what kind of vibration you're putting out. And affirming things by good words is a good start, but you've got to feel it. So we really want to change our vibration. And I never have enough. Well, if, if you're constantly reaffirming that every single month when there's not enough money to pay the bills or whatever it is that you seem to be lacking, if it's not enough love, not enough holding, not enough laughter, um, then that's what you're inviting in. Also, I'm not good enough. I mean, how many kids were told, actually told from their parents that they weren't good enough? How many kids were raised in religion where they're actually told you are not worthy? <laughs> and so we take that in. Little kids are like sponges. And so we take these belief systems in. And maybe you have the belief that you don't belong on this earth. So a lot of spiritual people, maybe subconsciously, feel like they want to go home. They want to go back to God, back to source. And so they're not having a very good time in this human condition. However, if we're choosing to be here in this human condition, then we've really got to got to do our very best with it and choose to be here and commit to being here on this earth. Um, does your root chakra resonate with any of these? I'm playing the yes, but game and always have an excuse uh, for why you are not succeeding. So if you're always saying yes, but you must know this feeling when people have even asked for your help and advice and opinion and you give them your help and advice and opinion and then they say yeah yeah but and then they give you an excuse as to why they can't do that and then you come up with another great piece of advice and help and you tell them and then they go uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah i hear you but well, this is a game. It's actually a game in transactional analysis terms, and it's called the yes, but game. And that's because we love to keep ourselves stuck in our uncomfortable comfort zone. And this is all fearful root chakra stuff. So if you're playing that game, or you can usually see it in others, uh, pay attention to that. Or maybe you resonate with, I am constantly insecure. Well, I used to be constantly insecure too. And when you're constantly insecure, you cannot trust what you know. You can't trust your own intuition. You feel doubtful about everything. I mean, even to, even to the lightest extent of getting a huge menu and just being in a tizzy because you can't figure out what to order. So this affects from the smallest things to the biggest life choices. Or what about... 
I'm constantly fragmented or scatterbrained. Like, can you remember walking into a room for some reason and thinking, what on earth did I come in here for? Now that is not just menopause or old age, I can assure you. That's because your mind is in so many different places. I mean, look at all of the books that have been written about the power of now, the time is now, be in the present, right? That's because this is all mindset stuff because we've got so much distraction going on in our head and we learn how to be fragmented, which is why meditating is such a good tool because it helps us calm down and get quiet and still our brains on a day-to-day -day basis. Or what about, I feel like I'm a control freak. Well, if we try to control the outcome of something that's out of control, it will drive us to certain madness. I used to have a picture in my mind of how things had to be. And then of course the universe had a different plan, like not, not my plan, and it would make me absolutely crazy. So if any of these beliefs resonate, your root chakra, chakra is probably thirsty for some healing. And a simple place to start is by grounding yourself daily. For years, people like other therapists used to ask me, do you ground yourself? Do you ground yourself? And I'd say, uh, well, uh, yes, uh, sometimes. No, the answer is yes, every day I ground myself because I wasn't fully in my body. So I, I liked to be flying around on my broomstick much more. It was so much more exciting to be out of body. And so many people don't actually fully incarnate into their body. And if you're not fully in your body, how can you fully be connected to the earth? How, you, how can you be committed to this human experience? And so when I moved to Spain and was under the sun, I thought, well, why don't I actually give this grounding thing a try? I, I kind of thought it was ridiculous, quite frankly. And so every morning I would stand under the sun with my eyes closed and I'd do the whole roots of the tree thing that's evolved over the years. I now have a wonderful grounding so that I shall never be uprooted. And I would do this grounding and I was absolutely amazed at how radically this one small technique changed my life. First of all, I stopped walking into walls and glass doors, right? I was much more present in my day to day, much more on earth, much more in my body and aware of what was going on. And it was a really helpful, helpful thing. If you are in my 12-week um, class from fear into love, we start with the root chakra and we clear over 60 beliefs that are connected with it and absolutely isolate all of those dark pixels to infuse with light, which you will not find anywhere else as the universe's plan for me was to enlighten me with this information so that I could help others shift and have a clear understanding of all of the various ways that we may be blocked and how to clear our energy fields. I really have enjoyed enlightening all of you and sharing all of this wonderful information about our root chakra. I would so love to hear from you. Private message me and let's have a chat. So much love. I love you all. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye for now.